All right, I'm making a short video on elimination. So you have two equations, and basically what you're trying to do is find out where the equations intercept on the xy plane, which is a two-dimensional two plane. So you got two lines. Where are they going to cross on the plane? This is why you're doing this, which is important to know, to know your why. So your two equations were x plus y, or I'm sorry, x plus 4y equals 19, and negative x plus 2y equals negative 1. Now on this equation, you're just going to add the like variable. So you have x minus x, which is going to be 0x, plus 4y uh, plus 2y, which is a positive 6y. And then you're going to have 19, and you're going to have a addition of negative 1, which equals 18. And you're going to, because you eliminated x, you can see right there, you solve for y. And you divide 6 on each side, and you, therefore, that's what the three dots mean, y equals 3. Now, after you get the y, you have to go back and you want to take the y value, which is 3, and put it into both of the equations and leave x as a regular variable. So I did that on both of these here. The first one was x plus 4. You can see it right there. And I plugged in the 3y. So you got uh, 12. So you got x plus 12 equals 19. You're going to subtract 12 from each side. And you're ultimately going to get x equals 7. And I did it on the other equation, which is the bottom one. Negative x plus 2 times 3, that's where I plugged it in, equals negative 1. And you're going to subtract 6 on each side to balance the equation. And you're going to get negative x equals negative 7. You're going to divide a negative 1 on each side, and you're going to get x equals 7. So both of these hold true. And then you can say the statement, hence, the two equation intercept at point 7 comma 3. X is going to be 7, so X goes first just from the alphabet. Y goes next. That's how you always remember how the points lie. It's alphabetical. X then Y. Okay, now here you don't have anything that's equal. You have uh, an X and then 3X. You have negative Y and you have a positive uh, 7Y. So what you want to do is you want to eliminate the x. You can eliminate the y if you want to, but it's going to be a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top equation and I'm going to multiply it by a negative 3 because I want to eliminate my 3x. And uh, over here I ended up multiplying the negative 3 through each constant. That's very important. x has a constant at 1, so it's going to be negative 3 times 1 equals negative 3x. Okay, then I have a negative 3y, and because it's negative, it's going to become a positive, because two negatives equal a positive. It's going to be a 9y, and then a negative 13 times a negative 3 equals a positive 39. So I had to change a lot of signs there. You have to remember that two positives or two negatives always equal a positive, and then a positive times a negative is always a negative. You want to remember that. That's a, that's a rule in math. You want to remember that. Okay? Now, after I did that, I can eliminate the other one. So right here, you can see I have a negative 3x, and I have a positive 3x. I'm going to get a 0x, okay? 0 times x is 0. That's a property of math, the 0 property of mathematics for scalar multiplication. If you multiply anything by 0, it equals 0, okay? I can proof write and explain that later if you don't understand why, but right now I'm just trying to get through this. And then I have a positive 9y and a positive 7y, which equals a 16y. And then I add these two from this equation. You can see I moved it over here after I multiplied it by a negative 3. I go 39 plus 25, which is going to equal 64. And then I ended, up, I ended up having 16y equals 64. So divide each side by 16, and I'm going to get a y equals 4. Now what I did up there is the same thing. I ended up... Um, putting 4 in for y on each side, and you guys can see that right here. So I still kept, I took out the 3 because I didn't need it in there anymore. So I just took the regular two equations. The first one is 3x plus 4, or 7 times 4 equals 25. 3x plus 28 because 7 times 4 is 28 equals 25. I subtract 28 on each side because I want to get x by itself. 
And then I'm going to divide 3 on each side, and I'm going to get S, x equals a negative 1. And I double check to make sure it's the same over here. So when I plug these in, they have to end up being the same. That's why I double checked both sides. I did the top one first. X minus 3 times 4 equals negative 13. I have an X minus 12 because 3 times 4 is 12. You can see it right there. I just rung it down. Equals a negative 13. And then I have a positive 12 on each side, which equals X equals negative 1. And then I can put hence interception point of these two equations are negative one and four. Now, when I was looking at your guys' problem, there's another one, number six. You have X and Y are equal to each other, but the output is different. Those ones are not possible to solve because um, you don't have points that are gonna equal each other to match different outputs. So because, uh, because it's linear, you have to know that the points that lie are one to one, which means that if you plug in one point and each one, you're gonna get an output that's the same. You can't have two different numbers that equal the same output if it's on two is what it's called, okay? So uh, that's why that's different. So I think, I don't remember what the problem was. I think it was like uh, 2x plus 3y equals 10 and 2x plus 3y equals 12. Well, they can't have two different outputs if they have the identical value. So that's that one doesn't have a, a, an answer. And I'm not really sure how your teacher wanted to go about um, labeling it, whether it's no solution or it's there's an empty set or I'm not I'm not really sure. I would say that there was no solution on it, not so much an empty set. Um, but I, I'm not sure how your how your teacher wants to you didn't uh, notate it. But that's just what I saw. So hopefully this helped you out and I'll talk to you later. Bye.